This is Python's Paradise. This is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena, straight out of Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, here on September 11th, that fateful date. But here we are, 2022. But folks, we have a happier time on here today because we are celebrating the 40th anniversary of the last American Virgin. And uh, we can actually even throw in the 40th anniversary of Young Doctors in Love and Cat People as well. <laughs> My guest was busy that year. Folks, I give you the lovely Tessa Richard. How do you do, Tessa? Hi. <laughs> Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's been uh, a lot. 11 years since 9-11 i remember where i was when that happened you know so yeah yeah it was pretty terrible that day yeah um, i was in my room and um my co-worker called it was quite early in the morning because i was in los angeles at the mm -hmm. time and i'm from new york so new york is my hometown and she said tessa you know get up something's happening in New York and you need to put on the television. So like I, the answering machine, she was on the answering machine. So I quick got up and I called her back and I turned on the TV and it was shocking because like nobody knew at that time what was happening. And, you know, one of the planes had hit one of the twin towers and nobody knew, was it, you know, just a random thing that the plane lost its way or was it a, an attack? And then, you know, we all found out what happened. It was shocking. It was, I think everybody knew where they were that day. So, um, yeah, so this is the um, 11 years. That's amazing. Yeah, I was at work when it uh, happened, you know, so, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, yeah the I whole remember. world was watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. My um my niece's husband was a New York City fireman and he was there at 9/11 rescuing people. Wow. Yeah, so you know, he has a lot of injuries that you know, he's still taking care of to this day, but he's doing okay, you know. But it was definitely he doesn't like to talk about it. The memories are too painful. He lost every single person in his firehouse. He was the only one that survived. Oh, yeah, they all, um, you know, passed away uh, saving people, but he survived, which is a miracle. So but yeah, so at least, you know, now it's been 11 years and people have rebuilt their lives and, you know, the healing process is still going on, though. Yeah. Well, I got to say, I cheered when I saw a Zero Dark 30. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to get crass at you, but can you imagine how badly uh, Bin Laden shit his pants when he knew they were coming in on him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He must have been flipping out. But, yeah. um, you know, what what he did and had done was just, you know, heinous. It was just horrifying. So, but... Yeah. Um, yeah and i'm glad they didn't bring him in alive i mean i know that's a hateful thing for me to say but look what he no, did no no i i agree with you i'm i'm not a a mean person but in this instance it was better that you know they did what they did mm -hmm. you know so but anyway yeah so <laughs> here we are <laughs> well 40 years ago you were pretty busy. <laughs> I, that was a busy year for me, I have to say. Yeah. yeah I can't well, believe it's been 40 years. Wow. The Last American Virgin. But, you know, I'm going to talk about this first. I love this film, you know, and uh, <laughs> I had a lot a lot of fun. Um, I've had uh, I've had a couple people on uh, from this movie. I had Joe Robo on and I've had um uh diane franklin both on here so yeah i love diane she's so funny and joe is such a sweetheart they're both great mm -hmm. um, yeah it was wonderful working with both of them yeah but i mean of course you know uh there you are one of the three <laughs> girls 
uh, snorting, sweetened, uh, <laughs> what what they call that? That um, coffee. Sweet and low. <laughs> <laughs> I you, think you, they you... actually used um, baking soda. I don't know what it was, but all I know is that I had such a headache because we actually, the three of us actually snorted that up our nose it was like baking soda mixed with sweet and low or something it was horrible and we actually to make it look real we did snort it i mean what actors do for the part <laughs> is truly amazing um but uh I, I think it turned out well it was a funny scene well winnie seemed to like the corn chips <laughs> she did <laughs> she really did that actually i laugh every time i see it i don't see it very often but when i do i think this the the part with winnie was hilarious really funny she's a really good comedian oh i would i would say yes yeah. you know uh talk about um actually you know what before we get into this um and I know I, I, I asked this about all my guests, but I would love to get some of your background and what led you to get into acting. Um, actually, I always wanted to be an actress, but believe it or not, I was very shy in school. I'm not now. I'm very you know outgoing, but you know, nobody believed that I would ever do it because I was shy. But in high school, they had a couple of plays and everybody in the class was allowed to be in it. So they just assigned us roles. And once I was on stage, I, f I loved it. And I felt like this is my path. And so after high school, I went to a year of community college and I auditioned for the lead in the college play. It was called Bus Stop. It was a mm -hmm. play by William Inge and Marilyn Monroe had done the movie. Mm -hmm. And I got the lead in that. And that was it for me. I knew that this was my path in life. So I went to an open call for the Broadway show Grease in New York City. And I got the part. There was like 300 kids there. And I was so nervous. And I was shocked that I got a call back because I was nervous. And um, Vinnie Lift, the casting director, said they called me back because I was really right for the role. And he said, we could tell you could sing. You were just nervous. So I got the role and I first went on the national touring company and then I went directly from the national tour to the Broadway company um, and Patrick Swayze was playing Danny Zuko at the time and he was not famous then but uh, we all knew that he would be because he had that star quality and so I did the show with Patrick Swayze every night and it was really thrilling um, after I did Grease I stayed in New York for a while and I auditioned for a lot of Broadway shows and I kept getting callbacks and it would be between like me and another actress. And it just wasn't like happening, like the doors weren't opening. So I decided to move to LA and then my career really, really took off. Um, so that was, that was it for me. And um, I just stayed in Los Angeles for like 29 years. <laughs> um, <laughs> But my acting career was quite short. I really only did television and movies for about five, six years. And um, and then I ended up doing other things. But I think when my daughter graduates high school, I think I might try to go back into it, get like a commercial agent, something like that, or maybe do some theater. So I, I haven't shut the door on it quite yet. Did yeah, your so. daughter go take up acting? Actually, she's an amazing artist and she wants to be an animator. She wants oh. to go to CalArts. Yeah, she wants CalArts is um, a school for the arts in California and they're known for their animation department. Um, they're affiliated with Disney. She's very talented. However, this year she joined the drama club and she's very excited about it. So she's really getting into theater as well. So I'm, I'm happy about that. You know what? I've interviewed one of the voice actors who was also an animator from the movie Sausage Party. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, Scott Scott Diggs Underwood, who did four of the voices, four of the voices in the film. He's also an animator. He's from Vancouver. Oh wow! I've never been, but I would love to go there. I'd love to yeah. go to Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. And I've had Ralph Bakshi on here a couple times. Uh, 
who of course did Fritz the Cat and uh, Heavy Traffic and stuff like that. So, oh, wow. uh, yeah, I would love to do. I did a couple of voiceovers um, for a couple of films, but I would love to get into voice acting. I think it's a really lucrative field. It's a lot of fun. You don't have to look great when you go to work. <laughs> you can wear your you can wear hair in a ponytail, sweats, no makeup, because you know you, they just want your voice. I mm -hmm. think it's such a great um, field to go into. Yeah, and then of course in Toronto, there's Dave McRae, the voice man, who also uh, is a voice actor. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have a lot of talent in Canada. A lot mm -hmm. of actresses and actors, and yeah, lots of people come here to the states and and go back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, talk about getting cast in the Last American Virgin. Oh, my gosh. Well, I was very good friends with Steve Anton. As you know, he was one of the leads in the movie. And yeah, he's um, the one that picked you. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he did. So um, his mother was my manager, Brenda mm -hmm. Anton. And what's funny is the name of the role that I played in Last American Virgin was Brenda. <laughs> and so Steve said to me, there's a part that they haven't cast yet, a part that her name is Brenda, and you'd be perfect for her. I want you to meet the director, Boaz Davidson. And I said, OK. So I went in and I met him and I auditioned and I got the part. It was so easy. No agents. No, you know, nothing. It was just I signed the contract and that was it. So um, all because of Steve Anton, I got in the movie. Um, at the time, it was just kind of a smaller movie. It wasn't like a big A movie. But yet this movie has stood the test of time because this movie became a cult classic. It came out and the it, same summer as Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Another one of my um, favorites. Yeah. Oh, wow. Me too. I love that movie. Yep. I didn't know they came out the same year. Oh, wow. yeah. Yep. Um, I think uh, Last American Virgin, I think, was the tail end of July. And um, oh, wow. Fast Times at Ridgemont High was mid-August. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, um, I I love both those movies. They're coming-of-age movies. And, and you know, they were, there was a lot of, like, silly things in the movies. But the, the movies were really... Um, solid in portraying what teen teenagers go through. And it's universal. And it's still, like I said, it stands the test of time because today on uh, there's, a, do you get VH1, the music video station in Canada? MTV um, VH1? Yeah, um, I don't have television. I just watch my Blu-rays on my television. So uh, Okay, well, there's a music channel and they play movies and um last american virgin they play quite often and we have a whole new set of fans these young kids that really love it and i went to an autograph signing show in new jersey and all these young kids were in line to have me sign the poster and i'm like how do you know about this movie you're so young and they're like they play it on vh1 all the time i'm like wow so it's amazing we have a new fan base a young fan base it's really amazing. Was that New Jersey Chiller? Yes. Never yes. done that one. Never done um, that one yet. It's really good. It was mm -hmm. in, I think, Parsippany, New Jersey. So I had a really great time. Even though my daughter and I missed the plane, <laughs> we had to get another one. I don't know what happened. We were running. But we, we got there. We missed one night, but we got there the next day. What did your so. daughter think of it? She loved it. She was young at the time. And she said, Mom, I'll collect the money for you. And so like I would sign the autographs and she'd collect the money. She'd be like, $20, please. She loved it. She really enjoyed it. She was she's a great kid. So. What's the most unique thing you've ever been asked to sign? Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything. Actually, I hate to say it, but nothing. Just like um, you know posters and got my picture taken and you know dvds and videos just the kind of normal the normal stuff nothing out of the ordinary i would have laughed if it was something out of the ordinary i would have signed it <laughs> why not <laughs> so your your signature is not tattooed on anybody yet I don't, not that I know of <laughs> but i do get a lot of things in the mail um uh to sign you know a lot of uh, pictures that people get things that I've never seen before you know photographs they might have taken it right from the film and you know I sign it and send it back and um, 
but nothing really too extraordinary. Um, I did get a picture of Louisa Moritz and somebody said, could you please sign this? And I had to tell them I'm not Louisa Moritz. <laughs> she was in the movie, but that's not me. <laughs> so I guess that was the most unusual thing. So, yeah. No, <laughs> but Louisa Moritz was uh, quite honored. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. She was, she was very funny in the movie. Yeah. 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 Well, of course, you were among three girls that um, these three individuals that are all trying to lose their virginity uh, <laughs> to pick, pick up. You know, uh, there was a, a line of dialogue that um, Lawrence Monoson says in the movie that I got to say, I disagree with it. You know, like he says, I w he goes, I'd much rather. Uh, kiss godzilla the nose and i'm like <laughs> what do you mean by that <laughs> i know it's a little insulting <laughs> like seriously well like, come on <laughs> you're still beautiful uh oh my gosh thank you that's so yeah. sweet oh my gosh like, that's so sweet oh my yeah, gosh 40 like, years later what what's he <laughs> thinking <laughs> yeah. yeah i didn't think we were that bad thank you for that yeah yeah uh, certainly better than godzilla anyway <laughs> yeah i hear that line i'm like really really <laughs> really oh uh, thank you greg that's really sweet yeah um, but uh and of course, you get to be the first one. Pick. I still, I love it though. They bring you over the house and coffee sweetener. They're bringing out in little lines on, and <laughs> you guys are falling for it. And I love that Winnie just takes snorts a whole big bunch of it. Oh my gosh, she! I I wonder what her head felt like because, as I said earlier, my I had a headache. Winnie really did more than anyone else. She must have really had a headache. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, and uh she got to keep her clothes on, but I gotta say, she was so friggin' funny, you know, when yeah. Lawrence Bonovson's trying to get her on track. She has a taco chip, she goes, You want a chip? I know. And he takes the scissor from the, the mother's sewing kit, of sewing <laughs> box, and he's trying to cut the, the, the end of the back just, of the bra. She knows exactly what's going on, and she just slowly <laughs> the chips. She just <laughs> keeps eating the chips. I actually laughed out loud when I saw it for the first time. I said, she is genius in this part. Mm -hmm. Um she is really funny. I saw her like a year or two ago in a commercial, a national commercial here in the States. And she was funny. I said, oh, I can't believe that her career wasn't, um, you know, I don't want to say bigger, but I can't believe she didn't get more parts than she did because she really, really is a funny, funny comedian. And that scene really proves it. And her line, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> She kept saying, I don't care. <laughs> I know, that was a funny scene. Yeah, yeah, that was funny. She was great in it. And uh, mm -hmm. and um, you two got paired off. Poor, I, when I interviewed Joe Robo, it's like, um, or Robo, excuse me. <laughs> He's the one that wound up in real trouble <laughs> running out. He ended up in bed with the wrong person. <laughs> and ends up running out of there in his underwear and socks. He he is hilarious, and um, doing that scene with him was really funny. It was really fun. I had to keep a straight face, and um, he's such a sweetie. He really is. He's a good guy. Mm -hmm. But he was running out of house, and I think the I can't remember the father. Someone's hitting him with a shoe as he runs out. <laughs> Something they're hitting him with something, and he's like, all of a sudden, running out. We're like, hurry up! We're all in the car waiting for him, you know. <laughs> so yeah. it was. It was. We really had a lot of fun doing that film. I actually, um, I didn't want to be topless in that film. I t I signed the contract. As I said, I was with Steve, and I didn't have an agent you know do the deal for me so i signed the contract and i didn't know that there was a clause in there that said we had to take that our top off and i 
actually held up production. I kept saying to Boaz, I really don't, I don't think it's necessary. I think I can come out in my brassiere. I don't think I need to be topless. And he said, you signed the contract. He goes, he goes, we love you, but we'll have to sue you if you don't really do this. Yeah. And I felt like, so I held up production for a little while and then like, I ended up doing it because I, I got scared and, um, you know, I didn't want to be sued or have my paychecks garnished, you know? So then, um, I, uh, did the scene. And then when I was at Schiller many, many years later, Winnie said, Oh, they said the same thing to me. And I said, go ahead, sue me. I don't have any money. And she kept her bra on and it made it funnier because, um, Lawrence Monison was trying to get the bra off and it actually made the scene funnier. And I said, really Winnie? She goes, Oh yeah. They said the same thing to me. I just said, no. I said, Oh my gosh, I was so dumb. <laughs> I was so green and ignorant, even though I had done a lot of work in the industry, I still, you know, was too scared to say anything. So, um, it's what I anyway. like to call bullying is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I had, you know, because I had done cat people and there was a topple scene, you know, th they probably didn't think I had a problem with it, but I, I had done like three films, like one in beach girls where I went into the swimming to my uh, swimming pool. And I think my, my top went up. I can't remember. It's been a long time. But after that, I said, this is not the, the route I want to go. It made me feel very uncomfortable with my Catholic upbringing. <laughs> I said, my Catholic well, upbringing is starting I'm, to make me feel really guilty about this. I'm Christian and I'm not judging you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, I actually um, was, I was feeling bad because I did go to church on Sundays. And then mm -hmm. I was playing these like, you know, parts that were risque. And I said, it's just not working out with with my lifestyle. But I have to say now today, that's nothing like somebody like that for one second in a movie that's topless for a few seconds. And that's nothing today. Today, that's well, like, um, it could be worse. You could be in one of those lousy Kirk Cameron movies. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> True. You know, True. I mean, you, you know, you, you may still avoid fireproof and saving Christmas. So consider yeah. yourself lucky. You, I mean, yeah. you probably want, want more clothes on and that one to hide your shame. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's so funny. Well, you know, it's hard because like as an actress, you say, well, I'm going to do what's right for the role, even though in real life, I, I, wasn't like my characters and um so it was a con it was a, a conflict for me so I ended up getting um offered a couple more roles actually pretty good roles in you know a-list films that I turned down I actually turned down some really good roles with some you know a-list actors just because I didn't want to do that again so I felt like what was more important to me was how I felt on the inside and you know the money and all that it it didn't matter so uh i'm i'm glad that i i you know finally woke up and stuck to my guns you know but uh unfortunately what's captured on film is forever <laughs> so. well, what, what did you turn down if you don't mind me asking um there was a movie with sam shepherd and barbara hershey i don't remember the name of it it was a mystery and i was to open the door um I, I was the part that I was, I was somebody's mistress or something. And I, I was to open the door with like a kimono on, but with nothing under, and you could see full frontal nudity. I said, no way. And um, the casting director even called me at home, Elizabeth Lastig. And she said, you know, the director really wants you for the role. And I said, I just, I said, there's a lot of actresses in Hollywood that would love this role. I, I'm so, so, so sorry. Thank you for offering me the role. I, I am so flattered, but I, I just can't. And the other role um, was with um, Lou Diamond Phil Phillips. And it was another kind of action kind of movie. And I was to play a prostitute. And there was a like a, a love scene with me and Lou Diamond Phillips. And I thought about it and I thought, wow, you know, it's, it's a great couple of scenes. And then I just said, no, I turned it down. So I just thought, well, part of me thought, what difference does it make? You've already done these kind of roles. But the other part of me said, you know, I have to be picky about what I'm going to take from now on and make better choices. And like I said, I don't, I, 
I don't really regret the films that I have done because I had a wonderful time working on them. I met amazing people and I think they all turned out pretty well, but um, it's just a personal preference. I have nothing against nudity in film, if, especially if the scene calls for it. I'm definitely not a prude. It's just that you have to do what's right for yourself, you know, to thine own self be true. And so for me, it made me uncomfortable, but like for some other actresses, they don't have a problem with that and no judgment at all. Like I said, if the scene calls for it, absolutely, you know, so, um, if, yeah. if, they, if they really wanted you for that film, you know, like, here, here's the thing. I can't like if Alfred Hitchcock, being a master filmmaker that he was, was able to shoot that shower scene in Psycho without showing any vital nudity, then right. what is wrong with these filmmakers that they can't shoot around it and be creative about it? I agree with you. I think yep. that I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I just think that sometimes it's sensationalism. Sometimes the part calls for it, but mm -hmm. sometimes they go over the top and it's sensationalism. And I think in those cases, it's not necessary. And I've seen a lot of films and television shows where they have love scenes um, and they're not showing anything, especially on soap operas. I don't know if you have those in Canada. Yeah, the we have them. Yeah, the soaps. Yeah, they're well, good. Like, they're it, good. They're good sleeping pills. They're good for sleeping. <laughs> I admit it. I admit it. I love General Hospital. <laughs> but, but they do have love scenes and they shoot it really well in a way where you see the, the couple together, but yet they don't show anything. You'll see like her bathrobe drop to the floor and they'll show her legs. And you know, you know, use your imagination that they're about to have a love scene and yet they show nothing. And yet it's just as sexy as it is with blatant nudity. So like I said, I'm not judging anybody um, um, and I'm not judging myself. You do what you do at the time that you do it with the information that you have. But um, I think some scenes could really do without it. Um, and like I said, no judgment, no mm -hmm. judgment on anybody because I did it and mm -hmm. um, and as I said, if the scene calls for it, absolutely. But half the ones that have it don't really need it. No, they don't. Yeah. Yeah. So um, <laughs> just my opinion. <laughs> so but it, it was a fun film at Last American Virgin. It was really one of the um, best films as far as good memories go for me. Well, it. Um, so I got the Blu-ray here. Um, I um had interviewed Diane Franklin and she had said to me uh, regarding nudity that she limited herself to three nude scenes. Oh, I this, didn't know that. This was one, uh, Amityville to the possession. There was one other one. I forget the title. And, uh, she said three and that was it. That was all she was willing to do for nudity, you know? And, yeah. Um, yeah. And her daughter's hilarious. I love Olivia. Oh, she? <laughs> She's hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I've had her on here. Um, but um, nonetheless, you know, um, she was great in this. And of course, uh, she said everybody hated her character after this movie. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, I guess I guess that's true, because she went back to um, Steve Anton's character mm. and left Lawrence Mondeson high and dry, so to speak, and left him in the dust. Yeah, I guess that's true. But, you know, it's sort of human nature. It is. It's human nature. He's the one that she really was into. And yeah. she ends up with him. And that actually happens in real life more than I can say. Sometimes you end up with somebody that really isn't good for you and you want to end up with the one that you know is good for you on paper. They're fantastic, but you just don't have that spark. And um, so I guess I could see, well, why people probably weren't fond of her character after that. 
yeah. we all we're all fond of her though and uh, oh she's a doll i love diane funny yeah. funny and so so pretty you know i remember at the time when i was doing the film i just thought I looked at her, I went, that is a girl with natural beauty. She had this beautiful curly brown hair and such a beautiful face. No, you know, without a stitch of makeup, such a beauty, you know, and sweet. So it's, always, and, and like I said, everyone in the cast was so nice. I was really, I had such a good time on that movie. It was like fun, you know, it was like a fun movie to be on. And, um, I'm sitting here petting my dog. <laughs> That's why you see my arm moving. My dog is. <laughs> my kitty is over there sitting. He knows. Oh, he knows oh. if he. He knows if he comes over here, he's going on camera. Oh, we love cats here. We yeah. wish we could have one, but our dog won't tolerate another cat. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we can't get a kitty. But um, my daughter and I were talking about it last night. She found a cafe up in Raleigh, North Carolina, that. Um, you can go to the, it's a coffee house, like a coffee cafe, and you go there and you buy coffee or tea, and um, they have cats all over that you can adopt, and it's called some, I forgot the name of it, she actually sent me a link for it last night when I was in my room, she sends me messages from her room to my room, <laughs> um, but anyway, we're going to go there, and the proceeds, uh, some of the proceeds go for caring of the cats, mm -hmm. so it's something called like kitty kitty per cup or something i don't know i forgot the name of it but it's it's we're gonna go support them we're gonna go up there and have some tea i'm not a coffee drinker i'll go have some I like tea. tea as well yeah i'm a tea drinker mm -hmm. yeah i should live in england <laughs> so but anyway uh yeah so we love kitties we love dogs i'm really big on um you know helping the animals because they can't speak for themselves mm -hmm. so yeah. Well, how about that Lawrence Monoson? I mean, this is the first time he plays a virgin, but it's not going to be the last because, I mean, two years later, he was in Friday the 13th, the final chapter, and those two twins, none of them were in into him, but uh, uh, Crispin Glover, his buddy, who he's trying to couch, he, he <laughs> nabbed one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't see Friday the 13th part two. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't. Part four. But, uh, yeah, I ran into Lawrence several years ago. I was um, up at the Hollywood Reservoir. Um, There's like a track around there you can run and walk. And, mm -hmm. and I saw him. That's the last time I saw Lawrence. He looked great. He looked fantastic. Uh, well, I've never been able to get him on here. And I've just kind of to the point right now where i've given up on it but but um, yeah but uh i just find it funny that he pretty much doesn't get the girl here and he doesn't get the girl in Friday <laughs> the 13th the final <laughs> chapter either i don't know is that typecasting i just don't know <laughs> i don't know yeah but, um yeah but um yeah this movie also had a great soundtrack Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Last American Virgin that, that you're talking about that. Yeah. Amazing. The, all the eighties music. Um, and I think that's why they put it on VH1 because it's, you know, music video channel and all the kids love the eighties music. I do too. I miss that time frame. I had a great time in the eighties. Sadie, Sadie, yeah. did you want to say hi? <laughs> did you want to say hi, Sadie? Say hi, Sadie. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> oh, he runs away. <laughs> She's hey Izzy, can you give the dog a biscuit? Oh, thank you, honey. Sadie, you're gonna get a biscuit in one second. <laughs> Is Izzy gonna have a biscuit too? Yeah, she uh... <laughs> no, no, not those. Those are medicine. Yeah, those are medicine for hip and joint uh problems. My dog what, what what's yeah. Izzy's favorite movie you've done? Hey Izzy, do you have a favorite movie that I've done? Or you don't really? She, I don't think she's ever seen any of my films. She doesn't let me watch. It. Oh, I do too. You can watch whatever you want. I've never seen Last American Virgin, but you're too ashamed. Oh, you know what? She's never seen Last American Virgin, but she can see it now. She's almost <laughs> seventeen. She can see it now. But oh, I think I do have a copy of it. Um, I think she liked Bronco Billy. You like where I spun on the wheel? 
I don't remember that movie. She saw a lot of it when she was little. So don't I you don't love remember- that? Don't you love that daughter support? I don't remember that movie. <laughs> she, she saw things when I was little. I didn't let her see Last American Virgin or Cat People because I was topless. But now that she's seventeen, I don't really care. Almost seventeen. You were, you were missing and just sit there with it. Sit there with it on the floor. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know what it is with her. Oh, you've got your biscuit. Okay. <laughs> um, but I, she has seen some of my television work. She just saw me recently in um, a rerun of Murder, She Wrote. Mm-hmm. And I was in a scene with Bill Maher and Faith Ford. Um, Bill Maher has a, a talk show here in the yep. state. And Faith Ford is... Uh, an actress here in the states and i had a scene with them and uh that just played so she just saw that and laughed and um she did see some of my other films any which way you can bronco mm-hmm. billy but she doesn't remember them and i never watch my films i mean you i know what I, I think sadie I never... would be uh, uh be traumatized by cat people <laughs> Sadie definitely would. Sadie would start barking. In fact, if Sadie hears another dog or like a cat growling on TV, she starts to like bark. She hears it and she gets really, (laughs) really (laughs) nervous. It's really funny. She howls too. She will howl. Yeah, she's very funny. We're 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 a, a very colorful household i with the babies and the daycare and the dog and my birds and my daughter <laughs> there you go we well, have a yeah fun life yeah great soundtrack i'm a big fan of the cars and of course they had a couple songs on the soundtrack um, i love the yeah. cars too yeah, yeah they're awesome yeah so yeah great soundtrack did you go to the premiere when it came out um I believe I did. I I oh I went everywhere with Steve Anton. He was one of my best friends. Mm-hmm. So at the time, um, we I always took him as my, like if I wasn't dating anyone, Steve was my date. Like mm-hmm. Steve was my friend, but like I'm like I'm not dating anybody. Do you want to come with me to this? He he went with me to the Cat People premiere, and I sunk down in my seat. And he was laughing. He was laughing his head up and I sunk down in my seat and hid. Um, and yes, I believe we did go to uh, the last American Virgin premiere together. Yeah. Are you still in touch with Steve? I had lost touch with him. And then recently, like about a year ago, two years ago, we got back in touch and we were on Facebook together. And then I know his mom passed away. I hadn't seen his mom in many years. And um, that was a very, very hard time for him because Steve and his mother were great friends. I mean, they were mother and son, but they were fantastic friends. And um, yeah. And when she passed away, he, he lost his best friend. Basically she was amazing. She was funny and there was nobody like Brenda Anton. I, I I miss her. You know, I lost touch with a lot of people when I moved away. I just had a very busy life being a single mother, um, raising a child on my own and starting my own business. I literally didn't talk to people for a really long time. I just, I didn't have time. I was too tired and, and busy. And um, on the weekends, I was doing things with my daughter and it was, it was, it was challenging. And I just, couldn't chat on the phone like I used to, but I I need to get back in touch with Steve again and uh, tell him that I did your podcast. (laughs) There you go. I've never had him on and I know somebody who's had Winnie on. I haven't had her on. Oh, you must have Winnie. And what about Kimmy, Kimmy Robertson? Oh, I would love to get Kimmy Robertson. Uh, (laughs) She was a bad manner showing everybody the proper way to kidnap her. (laughs) Oh my god. She is really great. Kimmy is so great. If you get Kimmy and Winnie, what a doll. You've got to get Winnie on too. Winnie and I, Kimmy. I would love to, you know. Yeah. Um I don't know uh how to get hold of Winnie, but I heard you, she's married to one of the actors from Risky Business too, and I love that film as well. Oh, I I didn't know that. Um Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah, I could get um, I'm friends with, you know, Calvin Spiker, who um, he gets all the actors and actresses for the autograph signing shows. Mm-hmm. And I know that he knows how to get in touch with Winnie. So I, you know, might be able to get 
her information for you and text mm-hmm. it to you. Sure. Um, and Kimmy's if, if um, you know, I, I'm sure that I, I don't want to say it would be okay, but I'm sure it would be. Um, Steve rare, rarely makes appearances, does anything. He, I don't know why, maybe because he's busy directing now, but he hasn't been to any of like the shows, maybe one, any of the autograph signing shows. I'm sure a lot of the fans would love to see him. You know, I haven't seen him in years, but I hear he looks great. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I would love to see him. It's, you know, it's funny how your life goes down different paths and it takes different turns and you might not see someone or talk to them for years and it kind of goes like in waves. And then all of a sudden you hook up again and, you know, like there's been people that I haven't spoken with in a long time. And I just got in touch with another friend of mine just like last week and I hadn't spoken with her in years. And it, it's funny how like people come and go in your life and they come back. Yeah. It's, it's nice, you know? You so know, one of the things I want to bring up about uh, Kimmy Robertson is that every time I watch the last American Virgin, they're trying to play her off as this nerdy girl with the pigtails and the glasses. And I'm like, you know what? They're not fooling anybody because I bet you she takes those glasses off and lets her hair down. But she's hot, you know. She is. She's really pretty. Yeah. They actually made her look like nerdy, but she's got the cutest face. And look, I you wasn't know, buying pretty. it at all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. She's 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 adorable, and and she's got that cute voice and mm-hmm. um. But uh, I, I, the last time I saw her was at Chiller, and she looked great, and uh, that was really fun to do that show. She's um, a very, very nice person. She has a big fan base, too. There were tons of people at her table um, wanting her to sign things. She's like a fan favorite. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, I hope that she comes on your show, and Winnie, too. Oh, and who I'd knows? Maybe to. Steve. Maybe Steve. I don't want to speak for him. I know he doesn't do many things, but you never know, you know. Yeah, but yeah, so but I had Joe Robo a couple times, and I've had uh, Diane Franklin on here, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. so, uh, yeah, Diane is really awesome, and uh, yeah, but yeah. you know what? It's not the only thing you got, you know, uh, 40th anniversary on. I don't have the Blu ray for Cat People because it's currently mm-hmm. going to be sent to me because wow. Lynn Lowry is in that movie. I met Lynn mm-hmm. at uh, Lynn was the uh, the prostitute in it that yes uh, gets a, yeah, yeah and that scene a lot of people thought I did that role people that mm-hmm. hadn't seen me in a while and I'm like no th- that's not my scene although I wish that <laughs> well part of me wanted to say aha uh-huh, that was me but um yeah because that I, Malcolm McDowell was so great to work with he made me feel as comfortable as I could feel under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. I was completely freaked out with the way they shot it. Um, And I, I felt really nervous. And he said, you know, don't worry about it. My wife, you know, Mary Steenburgen, she did a nude scene, completely nude. And he said, and she's a very, you know, respected actress. He said, don't worry about it. The scene calls for this. And it was a kind of sensationalism type of scene, but he said, you know, um, you know, don't worry. And he just really made me feel very comfortable. Uh, Calvin saw him at an autograph signing show several years ago and they called me and I missed the phone call. Malcolm and Calvin were like, Tessa, (laughs) where are you? (laughs) And I missed the phone call. But anyway, uh, he was lovely to work with. I, I was happy at least I got to work with Malcolm McDowell and Nastasia Kinski. I got to know her a little bit and her mom while we were on location in Louisiana. And um, she's really a nice person, Nastasia Kinsey, really sweet girl. So it was a, it was nice. I got to see New Orleans. I had never been there and it was a really cool city. If you've never been, it's, it's a really interesting city. The architecture is really pretty. And um, so I, I, being in this business has been really such a blessing. I've met so many wonderful people. I've worked with lots of, you know, respected people. And I have to say, it's been good to me, the entertainment industry. 
I, I, I'd like to go back to it. I, I, right now I can't, my lifestyle doesn't um, lend itself to auditioning. But when my daughter graduates, I think that maybe I'll start sending in, you know, uh, footage, you, you know, now you, you can audition online. You just send in a, a tape of yourself, you know, video footage. And I think I might go back into it. I, I keep toying with the idea. So we'll see. Of course, now I'd be the grandmother. <laughs> I'd be the grandmother or an older mom. I'm, I, I'm an older mom to have a teenager, but, um, but it's all good. And my daughter's walking past. But anyway. <laughs> you know what? I, I met Lynn Laurie at uh, Frightmare, not Frightmare in the Falls, uh, Horror Rama in 2018. It was the first time somebody gave me their phone number at one of these events. I never did oh. call her, but uh, I did email her and we uh, I finally got her on. I was the first one to have her on a podcast. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. And she's a hugger, which I like. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm a hugger too. Yeah. yeah. But I got a bunch of stuff, pictures signed at her table. I got her movie Sugar Cookies with Mary Warnov signed, which oh, I hadn't wow. seen, but I had to see a movie with those two together. But during the pandemic, she was doing these deals where uh, you could get a, pic uh, a couple pictures and a signed Blu ray of whatever was coming out. So. She got a lot of business from me. I got Shivers signed. I got cr the Crazy signed. Uh, uh, there was another one um, I got signed, and now Cat People. So I got a lot of her movies oh, signed. Oh wow! Her. Yeah, yeah. So. She was very good in that scene. Mm -hmm. uh, really, very good and um, very pretty. And I, I just, um, I, I didn't really get to meet her, but I thought she was wonderful. And not that I remember, not that I recall, did I meet her on the set? I don't think so, but I really thought she was wonderful in that scene. Did you have the same issues with Paul Schrader as uh, she did? Uh, what were the issues? Well, um, in her scene where she ended up having to go down those stairs and whatnot, um, um, I'm trying to think how that went. Um did he make her like really fall or or was something along those lines where she needed some uh protection of some sort um oh, I, yeah. I'd, ha I'd have to go back and listen to it because it's a little hazy but um i know i know she was not impressed oh i i actually did not have any issues okay. with paul straight or um not that i remember so uh he just sort of I don't know. He, he just let me do my thing. And, um, uh, no, no, I didn't have any, any issues with him. How was, oh, Boaz, the... how was Boaz? Um, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but oh, how was yeah. Boaz after, uh, the initial situation with him? Oh, he was, he was very nice to me. I mean, even when I didn't want to do the scene, the topless scene, um, he, he was very nice to me. Even when he said, look, our production company will have to sue you. He goes, I don't want to. We like you very much. He was very calm about it. He wasn't like mean about it. He goes, this is just, you signed it. And this is, you know, you, you, if you go against your contract, you know, we'll, we'll have to do that. But he actually was quite funny in a lot of ways. He's like, come on, Tessa. You know, like, he's like, you know, it, it's funny. The scene is funny. He was more, um, how can I put it more appeasing? He, he, he wasn't mean about it. And okay. once I said I would do it, he goes, okay, come on, let's, you know, start production. He was, and he was like, you were really fine. Like he was, he was very nice to me. I really can't say anything bad about him except okay. that for a long time, um, the actors in the movie were not getting residual checks. And so screen actors guild was in litigation with last American Virgin. They're production company because we were supposed to be getting residual checks every time it showed and we didn't so we um the screen actors guild screen uh, sag after now at the time it was just screen actors guild now it's sag after but the um our union won uh, the lawsuit um with lost american virgin and they started paying us residual checks but we didn't get any for a long time which i thought was really not good yeah, true. so 
Yeah, that's that's not good, you know. But uh, but I can, I, you know, aside from that one little incident, Boaz Davidson was very very nice to me, and he was actually a very good director. Mm-hmm. I have to give credit where credit is due. He was a good director. And and we, like I said, it was one of the films that I had the best time on. Also, Bronco Billy with Clint Eastwood. I had a great time on that film. I had so much fun. Um, I got to spin on a wheel and Clint Eastwood threw knives at me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it, it's a real family picture. And I really enjoyed um, being on location in Idaho it was just beautiful there. It was in the fall of the year and the leaves were turning colors and it was a magical experience. I really loved being on that film. Mm -hmm. Uh, Clint Eastwood was wonderful to work with. He's sweet. And I met a lot of people on that film. Uh, 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 Another girl who played an assistant in the wild West show. I'm still friends with her to this day. So Yeah, she, Tanya Russell. She was one of the people that started the American uh, Stunt Women's Association. And she did a really funny stunt in that movie where she has to like, he tries to pull her up onto a horse. They're doing um, a stunt on a horse and she falls over on the other side. <laughs> she, it's a really funny scene. You ever get a chance? I don't know if you've seen Bronco Billy, but it's a really cute film. Well, you know what? I work at the hospital here as a COVID cleaner, you know? Yeah, and that's what I do amazing. for work. And before I got that job back in March, I had to study up on it, you know. So I, I had to get this film, Young Doctors in Love, you know. <laughs> oh. I, I figured if any film would prepare me for the job, it would be this one. <laughs> Oh yes, that's it was a funny film. <laughs> I I love this one scene. I was with Hector Alessandro and <laughs> the director um uh, Marshall uh, uh slipping my um, mind. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he told me to Gary take Marshall, the, yeah. Gary Marshall, thank you. He told me to uh take the bullet. There was a bullet and he told me to like tap my tooth with it. You know how like somebody will like bite on like a coin to see if it's real, like in the olden days. So he goes, take the bullet. Gary Marshall was funny. He was hilarious and so kind. One of the kindest directors I've ever worked with. And he goes, take the bullet and tap your tooth. And so everybody on the set started laughing. And the joke was that I had on a blonde wig, but underneath I had blonde hair. So when they pull off my wig, I have like my hair all pinned up, but my hair is still blonde underneath. Like he thought that would be really funny. He he really um, was a very innovative director, very very nice to work with. Um, and of course, Penny Marshall, who did uh, a lot of television here, uh, Laverne and Shirley, and other things. That's his sister. Mm-hmm. So I was really blessed to have worked with him. It's a wonderful man. That was that was a fun movie also to work on. It's had a good time. Michael Richards and just there was a lot of people. Oh, in that jeepers! Movie. Michael Richards went through hell in that movie. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> and he always cracks me up on Seinfeld too. <laughs> Loved him in UHF. I didn't see that. That's the Weird Al Yankovic movie. Oh, I love Weird Al. Oh, he's yeah. hilarious. He plays Stanley Spazetowski, um, TV star and janitor. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, I would love to see that movie. It sounds like something that's up my alley. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Michael but, Richards is funny. He's a funny actor. So uh, where would you rank Hector Lysno, uh among gorgeous women? After all, he was kind of in drag in that movie. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> unfortunately, he doesn't make a beautiful woman. I have to be honest. He's well, much better as a man. <laughs> the, 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 the fellow was falling for it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, my God. I haven't seen that movie in years. I almost forgot about that. Oh, my gosh. He puts my wig on. Yeah, he, he actually um, is amazing. I loved working with him. What a kind, easygoing, chill man. You know, really awesome. I, I got to work with some really good actors, I have to say. 
Um, I've been very fortunate. Oh, that movie had a lot of great actors. I mean, uh, Dabney Coleman, oh. Harry Dean Stanton. Oh, all of them were just amazing. Sean amazing. Young. Sean Young. She was very pretty. I don't yeah. know if she's still acting anymore. I'll um, say my one gripe with the film is that Michael McKean plays it too straight, and it kind of goes against the tone of the humor. And oh, I, 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 it really threw me off because this guy played Lenny and Laverne and Shirley is like, he's yeah. playing it way too serious. And when you look at the other actors like Harry Dean Staten pretending to drink piss and all this stuff, you know, and, yeah. and, and uh, Pamela Reed, you know, and, and stuff oh, like that. Yeah, she's very funny too. Yeah. And I, I was like, why is this guy, why is Michael McKean not being funny? Because it threw me off in his scenes, and considering he's the lead, it, it was. And I, I got the film on Blu-ray. Don't get me wrong, you know, but but I was like, why isn't this guy being funny? I have to go back and look at it again. It's been many, many years. Somebody sent me a link to it on my homepage on yep. Facebook. So I need to go back um, and take a look at that. Mm -hmm. um, I think you you know Doug Nelson. Do you know Doug Nelson? Uh, I heard the uh, name. Uh, he um, he's an actor. He was in uh, Last American Virgin, but he did more like extra work. But his father, um, Gene Nelson, was in all the musicals in the 1940s. He was in Oklahoma. Oh. He played Will Parker in Oklahoma. He was with Gene Kelly and all the tap dancers of the time, you know, tap dancing and all those sailor movies and stuff. Gene, uh, Gene Nelson, what an amazing dancer and actor from the 1940s and 50s. And um, Doug is a friend of mine, that's his son. But, uh, but anyway, he sent me the link to watch Last American Verge. I mean, excuse me, uh, Young Doctors in Love. I have to mm -hmm. go back and look at it because I remember, obviously I remember Michael in the movie, Michael McKeon, but I, I, I have to go back and, and see what you mean. But um, when you yeah. look at the humor in contrast to everybody else, now, this is just me. Maybe nobody yeah. else has an issue, but for me, it's like it's like they're in a comedy, and it's like this guy's walking into a drama. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, that's yeah. interesting. I will. I'll take a look at that. In mm -hmm. fact, um, I'll be curious to take a look at that. Um, yeah. I'll have to uh, look at the movie again. I don't have a lot of copies of things that I've been in. It's really sad. Um, when I moved from Los Angeles to North Carolina, mm -hmm. I used a moving company and they lost a lot of my boxes and a lot of um, film paraphernalia, a lot of my headshots and a lot of, you know, DVDs that I had and uh, videotapes at the time we had videotapes of me performing and things got lost or stolen. I don't know because they kept my stuff in a warehouse till I was ready to move. And, you know, for a couple of days and then I moved and they lost like eight or nine boxes of stuff. I lost so many photographs, not only of my acting career, um, so many DVDs of myself on TV and videotapes, but also family pictures, pictures of my mother and father and my grandparents at the turn of the century. So I, I, I was very upset about that, you know, other things you can replace dishes, blow dryers, things like that. You can replace that, but photographs and that type of stuff, you can't replace it. So unfortunately, a lot of the things that I've done, it, it's gone. I don't, I don't know how to get things back again. But Suppose you, I get call. I don't know who to call. But you did get to work with Clint Eastwood twice, and uh, yeah. I got to say, and of course I didn't realize for he's with Sandra Locke and. Uh, and Bronco Billy. Wow. Okay. Yeah, they were together. And then I worked again in any which way you can. He actually asked me, um, my agent, if I could audition for any which way you can. He he um had his people, I guess Mal Paso Productions, call mm -hmm. up my agent and say, We want Tessa for this part. It, the the audition was just a formality. Basically, he he got me the part. He also recommended me to audition for another film. He wasn't directing it or anything, but he thought I would be good. But I actually wasn't right for the film. He he wasn't really sure what the part was, but it was um, uh, 
Rachel Ward ended up getting the part. We're very, very different. I, I've met Rachel. She's so beautiful, but we were not the same type, you know, but it was very nice of Clint Eastwood to recommend me. He's a really nice man. And I loved Sandra Locke. Mm -hmm. Sandra Locke, I know that they had a dispute because they were together many years. And then she said that he ruined her career because he only wanted her to be in his movies. He didn't want her to be in other things. So there was a big legal dispute. But uh, personally, I thought she was lovely. And um, I had run into her at the supermarket a few years after I did Any Which Way You Can. And she's like, Tessa, if you ever need any help or you need an agent, please call me. I mean, she was she was so nice. And I never did because I never wanted to bother people. But I really should have taken her up on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I should have. I was really, I don't know. I always felt, I don't know, funny about stuff. But she was lovely. And on the set, she came right up to me, introduced herself to me, made me feel comfortable. She was really down to earth. And that's one person I wish I had stayed in touch with. Mm -hmm. I, I heard, I think she might have passed. I, I don't want to say that if she hasn't. She might have passed away. Um, if she hasn't, I apologize, but I, I think I could have really been friends with her. She was really nice. Um, but unfortunately it didn't work out with, with her and Clint. So, but he's a good man. He's a really nice man. He's still going strong in his nineties. Yeah. He, uh, she passed away in 2018. Yeah. He's um, what? 92 years old and still going. He's still directing, still acting. Oh my Goodness. He is true. And, and, and I love it because he's a vegetarian like me. Mm -hmm. I'm a vegetarian and he's a vegetarian. He loves animals. Um, I do too. In fact, I, I have a couple of animal charities I would like to bring up if that's okay. Oh, um, yeah, so. absolutely. That's yeah. one of the questions I always ask is if you have um, charities. Yeah, there's a, a few of them. I have so many, but I just picked three mm -hmm. if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, um, should I say them now or can I? Um, yeah, you can say them now. Sure. Um, one is Soy Dog Foundation and Soy is spelled S-O-I, not S-O-Y, S-O-I mm -hmm. Dog Foundation. It's a foundation in Asia and they rescue dogs from the, um, they rescue I think cats as well from the, the meat industry mm -hmm. in Asia and they have a lot of volunteers there. And they they um, they help the dogs and cats out and try to, you know, try to end the meat industry there with dogs and cats, which just breaks my heart. But they're a wonderful foundation. So anybody can look them up online. Soy Dog Foundation. The other one is my sister's um, her charity. My sister, unfortunately, passed away last year. Um, she was very sick, but she um, lived with. Uh, my daughter and I, and um, she was very much into the marine life. She loved dolphins and whales and the sea turtles. And she lived in Florida for many years. And the name of the charity is Moat Marine, M-O-T-E Marine, Moat Marine in Sarasota, Florida, USA. And uh, they have a aquarium and they, you know, rescue the sea creatures and help with the um, marine life. The other one is very dear to my heart. It's called Martin's Ark Avian Refuge. Martin is M as in Mary, A-R-D-E-N, Ark, A-R-K, Avian Refuge. And D and Brian Hicks are the um, owners of the charity. And they rescue tropical birds. They also have rescued dogs and cats as well. But they have a tropical bird sanctuary in Youngsville, North Carolina. USA. And if you look up Martin's Ark, um, Avian Refuge, you it'll come up and it'll show you where to donate. They are wonderful. I um, had rescued a bird, but I couldn't keep it. And I brought it to them. And they took in it was a sun conure. And they have African greys and cockatiels and cockatoos and parrots and, um, and they make homemade food for the birds and they are amazing. The birds, you know, go on their shoulders and on their heads and other, these birds are really 
fortunate to get with Dee and Brian. And um, they are wonderful, wonderful, good hearted people. And I would love it if people could donate to Martin's Ark. As I said, it's um, an avian sanctuary in Youngsville, North Carolina, USA. So there's a lot of other ones. Um, I also have given money to PETA, uh, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Um, there's Ethical Ele Elephant. Um, so there's, there's just so many that help animals. So, and I love, and also um, there's human trafficking charities that I would urge people to um, give to as well, helping rescue people from human trafficking. And there's your baby. There's this your fur my baby. buddy Gina. This is Skittles. Oh, oh, that was the original name of the bird that I rescued, Skittles. We changed it to Jack? Snooky, but it was Skittles. Oh, Skittles is beautiful. You hear that, Kitty? They all think oh, you're beautiful. Is he's male? Yes. A male. He is so handsome. Look you at that, that handsome kitty. boy. What a sweet kitty. <laughs> oh, oh, what a sweet boy. We you love him. <laughs> you hear that, Kitty? He says, and and see animals they can't they can't speak for themselves and also you know any 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 child um charity any charity that's for children i'm also for because children and animals they they're helpless they can't speak for themselves so we have to speak for them so any like i said any charity that helps get people out of human trafficking especially children i i am for that as well animals and children they they have no way of helping themselves so um that's my whole thing in life but your cat is very beautiful very handsome <laughs> <laughs> he's my um, buddy he's my buddy. yeah you yeah. know um here's something i generally do i usually um i i wasn't planning to bring this up but i think i will i generally what i'll do and i it, it depends on the person's sense of humor if um the i'll donate to the charity of their choice if they will do the doubt fire face challenge for suicide and depression awareness i don't know what the doubt fire i know mrs doubtfire the film with robin williams but i don't know the what the face challenge is okay robin williams of course left us and uh after the ice bucket challenge was a big success, one came out for suicide and depression called the Doubtfire Face Challenge, and it involves you taking a pie in the face and you nominate three people. <laughs> <laughs> and I've thrown this out to some of my guests, and um, I've had some luck with it, and I've had a few people where I've donated to their charities and they not come through. I have one do that to me recently, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't I, mind helping the person's charity, but uh, don't leave me hanging. That's what I say. <laughs> but uh, I, I will always come through. And um, like I said, if you're up for it, I'll donate to whatever one of those charities of your choice. I don't mind a pie in the face, especially if it's really good, if it's good pie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so how does that work? Do we do this uh, like we did today on the mm -hmm. link, and then my daughter just puts a pie in my face, and then mm -hmm. I, sh I, I, I kind of go like this. Sure. <laughs> With the whipped cream, is that mm -hmm. what we do? Yeah. Okay, I'll have to buy. I don't have a pie here. I'm not That's a big okay. pie eater, um, except on holidays. I'll have a slice of pie, but I'll have to make um, an organic pie, or I'll have to buy um, – a pumpkin pie. Um, actually, I'm making a pie. Uh, or you could just use whipped cream on a paper plate. That doesn't matter. Oh, it can be okay. that. It can be that simple. A whipped cream on a paper plate. Well, I can do that. We'll have to set up a time then. I'll yeah. have my daughter um, do that. It'll have to be short lived because then I'll have to go take a shower after. <laughs> yep. Yep. and wash my hair i oh, have no yeah. problem i have no problem doing that so um i i will i will take the challenge i will take the pie in the face challenge um maybe i'll buy a pie and my daughter will eat it she's a she has a big sweet tooth mm -hmm. i don't have much of a sweet tooth she does 
I, I always go. go for I go for the potato chips. She'll go for the cookies. So uh, if if I have a guilty pleasure, it's going to be potato chips. With her, it'll be cookies or cake. So uh, maybe go. I'll buy a pie and put lots of whipped cream on it, and then just have her have do a pie and the kisser. <laughs> okay yeah we could do yeah. it on here whatever time you know and yeah. we, can, we can make it short um yeah yep yep um yeah i am um, i uh will make a time with you i'll get in touch with unfortunately i have to get going today because i have to get my um my daycare is actually in my house and i have to get the daycare ready for tomorrow morning and take the dog out she's been sitting here patiently saying mom are you gonna mm -hmm. walk me <laughs> i got three and, more questions oh three okay more questions. That, that, absolutely, absolutely you mentioned animals what about the orangutan and uh any but way you can oh. get Clyde. Oh, Clyde. Well, they, I wanted to say hello to Clyde and Clint Eastwood said, you know, um, I went up to him. I said, can I say hello to Clyde? He said, absolutely. He goes, but the trainer wants everyone to keep their distance because it is a wild animal and animals can be unpredictable as much as you love them. They can be unpredictable. So I went up and they made me keep my distance and I smiled and I said, hi, Clyde. And, you know, and I waved and he he saw me. He acknowledged me. And like um, they were hold, two people were holding his hands and he was sweet. He was really, really sweet. It's the first time I was that close to an orangutan. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, he was pretty big, too. He was pretty he, he was a little bit. um intimidating a little bit but i think that if they had allowed me to go up to him i have a gentle voice and i think i could have um held his hand i think he probably would have allowed that mm -hmm. but the trainer was being i think because of liabilities the trainer was being cautious but i got to be pretty close just a couple of yards away and um i know clint eastwood worked with him a couple of times in um, every which way but loose and any which way you can. Mm -hmm. so that was a fun movie to do, any which way you can. There you go. Yeah, we were and of in course, Ruth, Ruth uh, Gordon in that um, from Rosemary's oh, yeah. Baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she's amazing. What a career. Yeah. What a career she had. But it was filmed in um, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. If, if you've never been there, what a beautiful, pristine place. I kept saying, wow, I can't see the air because I had come from L.A. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the air is so dirty in L.A. And especially if you live in a place called the Valley, there's the smog. And you can see almost like particles in the air. And when I went to Jackson Hole, it was like you could see for miles. And you saw the Grand Teton Mountains. And it was just so clear. I had never been a place where the air was so clean. What a beautiful, beautiful place. Place. I'd love to go back to Jackson Hole in the summer. It's very cold in the winter. Um, so uh, that was fun. <laughs> I need to ask about National Lampoon's vacation. <laughs> okay. Um, well, that was a lot of fun, too. I had two scenes, one with Chevy Chase and one with Anthony Michael Hall that both ended up on the editing room floor. Both scenes, um, I played a hooker at the hotel and I propositioned Chevy Chase and I also propositioned 13-year-old Anthony Michael Hall, which <laughs> I felt so uncomfortable. Even as an actress, I felt really uncomfortable doing mm -hmm. and of course he was thrilled because he was a young teenager <clears throat> and um even you know his character was like really jazz that i came on to him but the scenes were meant to be funny it was a comedy you know as anybody that have seen the vacation movies you know they're funny but um when you're editing a film what's not as important to the film ends up on the floor ed editing room floor and so both scenes were edited out and you can only see me with the kids um on the railing of the um second floor of the hotel looking um at I, the swimming I, pool uh... with christy brinkley in the swimming pool mm -hmm. and um everybody kept asking me were you an extra in that movie I said no no I had two scenes but they were they were cut out I was kind of glad to be honest with you I felt I felt uncomfortable about those scenes so I was kind of glad they were cut out but it, they they were meant to be funny so I hear a lot of uh negativity from people about Chevy Chase now I've, I've always been a fan of Chevy Chase 
what was your experience like with him? It was great. It mm -hmm. was great. He was funny on the set. He was um, personable, very, very warm. Um, in fact, they were all eating lunch. He goes, Tessa, come on over, eat with us. And, and then he was telling jokes at the table. And he was uh, very warm, you know, hug you without being, um, he wasn't being um, inappropriate at all. But he would just like give you a hug and just a very warm, funny person. I I did not have that um, experience with him at all of of anything that was um, not good. I mean, he he was uh, wonderful to work with. I I had a wonderful experience with him. Like I said, he was funny and warm and personable. He didn't seem difficult. You know, when they were directing the scenes, he seemed very easygoing. He didn't seem like, um, you know, like how they say movie stars are difficult. Not at all. That wasn't the experience that I saw. And we lost Harold Ramis. Uh, oh, yeah. No. Um, yeah, what I mean, a wonderful, kind man. I felt very bad when he passed. He yeah. he was a very, very nice man. Very Did you kind see Ghostbusters man. Afterlife? No, no, they, I didn't. I thought they, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters um, Afterlife, they digitally uh, had him in the film. Oh, they did. It's yeah. amazing what they can do with, with digital technology today. Yeah. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. That yeah. must have been kind of freaky knowing that he passed away and yet digitally they. Well, I guess the estate was fine with it, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah. um, and of course, Beverly D'Angelo, Christy Brinkley, you know, uh, <laughs> Chevy Chase had um, oh. beautiful women Chevy there. Well, let me tell you, the minute Christy Brinkley came on set, it was like Tessa who Chevy Chase was nice to me, but his he was like, boom. And I, I didn't blame him. She was so pretty. In fact, she was um, she is as pretty as she is. She's just as nice. Mm -hmm. When I was in a little trailer and she had a hotel room for her you know, to get ready in and everything. And she said, Tessa, would you like to share my hotel room with me? And of course, once again, I said, oh no, that's okay. I'm such a, an idiot. I've had so many people like offer me things and, and, and I said, oh, oh, that's okay. You know, but thank you so much for offering. I didn't want to bother her, but she actually was being nice. Like, hey, we can share the hotel room. And I was like, what a fool I was. I should have said, yes, I could have become friends with her, but what a nice person. Like I said, um authentic you know like her niceness is authentic she is genuinely a sweet kind person i really liked meeting her um very sweet very beautiful um and she was she she was great i loved meeting her um i'd love to see her again one day and and thank her for <laughs> offering to have me you know share the room with her because it yeah. was a big room to get ready in, to put your makeup on in, to get you know and you know maybe she wanted some um you know company you know she was in there alone and you know I should have said yes I'll, I'll share the room <laughs> what a fool I have said no to so many people like you know socially and you know it's just crazy but anyway um and then she uh she was great uh, Chevy Chase great um, I really haven't had too many problems with um, actors that I've worked with being unkind. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much everyone I've worked with has always been very nice. Uh, and then the, last, the last one I wanted to ask you about was the Beach Girls. Now, I've interviewed Gina um, Keo uh, last year when Looker had its anniversary, you know, and this film came up briefly, you know. Yeah, they the, the two... Um, yeah, the lead girl, uh, uh, what was her name? Something Blee. Um, Just a second. Deborah, Deborah, was it Deborah Blee? Yep. Deborah, Blee. Deborah yep. Blee. God, I can't believe I remember that. She was such a sweetheart. Like, just so really she was like her character she was just like this sweet girl next door really sweet i really liked working with her and then the two girls that were wild gina and um I, I, I don't recall the other girl's name. They were so much fun. They were mm -hmm. really a lot of fun. I had a blast on that movie. I really did. That was a fun movie. It was a wacky movie, but it was a fun movie. I have to say, you know, looking back on it, 
I did work on a lot of fun pictures because I did mostly comedy. So yeah, well, you're yeah. really you, well. You had I I don't catch it now, but you had the funny voice, especially in, yeah. Uh, well, you know, as I've gotten older, it's really funny. Um, uh, well, I have allergies here. I've probably been clearing my throat a lot during this entire interview because in North Carolina, the the air here is very damp and it's still it's almost the fall of the year, but it's still summer and we get those hot, humid days. We call it the three H's, hot, humid and hazy. But um, the air is always damp and I have congestion every day of my life that I live here because I have allergies here that I didn't have in Los Angeles. And even in the winter, it's damp. In the summer, it's humid. In the fall, it's damp. It's just the air. You never have a good hair day. My hair is always frizzy. <laughs> um, it's just the the air here is it's damp. So I have congestion. But um, my voice has definitely, as I've gotten older, dropped. Even my singing voice. I was a high soprano. And, you know, I mean, I started off as a singer. I told you I did Grease on Broadway. I did a lot of musicals. Um, I did sing a little bit on some films um, in the background on soundtracks. Um, mm -hmm. But my singing voice has dropped. I'm now more like I don't know if I'm alto, but I'm not a first soprano anymore. I might be a second soprano. My speaking voice has dropped. I mean, I can still do the high voice like that if I want to. But there you has, go. <laughs> yeah, I can still do that. But my voice has dropped from, I think, age, you know, just from many, many years, your your voice does drop. And also from living here, I have constant um, allergies and congestion. Um, people have said that to me, your voice has dropped. I said it really, really has. And my natural voice was higher. My, As you've seen in all the films, that was my natural voice. And it was a lot higher and breathier. But I guess I'd have to move to a drier climate to, to get that back, to get that back. Um, but North Carolina is a beautiful state. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful here. You have, you know, you're good and you're bad. You know, the air is very damp. Not good for my allergies. However, it's very pretty, mm -hmm. um, you know, so. But yeah, so uh, I, well, I can, yeah. I want to thank you so much for coming on thank here you. today. You know, this was such a pleasure. Um, I might know some other podcasters that would love to have you on their show. Do you, oh. you want me to pass your uh, information on? Yes, absolutely. That would be lovely. I would love that. You want me to yeah. pass your email on or? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, email or texting is fine. Okay. Um, the text, you know, I, I, I look at both. Uh, sometimes I check my email like every couple of days, but okay. my texting, I check pretty much every day, the texts that I receive. Well, but I just yes, didn't want, fun. yeah, I just didn't want to give any information if you didn't want me to, but. Yeah. But, um, if but, you feel they're reputable people, oh, then yeah. I, yeah, I, 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 that would be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you though, for, for honoring that. I appreciate it. Yeah. And um, yeah, this has been so much fun and I thank you so much for inviting me on your show and reaching out to me. I was really happy to, to be on your podcast and um, uh, you're, you're so nice and you're an animal lover. So you're, <laughs> you're, you're good in my book. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll talk to you uh, on an email or something. You can let me know what charity I'm to donate to. And uh, oh, okay, yeah. yes, that that would be that would be wonderful. And we'll have to figure out a time where I get the pie in the face. <laughs> sure, sure, we can we can uh, figure that out, and uh, that'll be fun. So uh, I've had uh, a few that, of my that's... guests do that. Yeah, yeah, I have no problem um, doing that. I have no problem looking foolish. <laughs> it's all part of comedy it's all in good fun so there you go. I, 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 I well, look forward to it it's funny because uh i haven't gotten diane franklin i haven't thrown it out to her but her daughter olivia does a, a youtube channel with um her friend and they had a cameo oh. i found out they had a cameo when um uh diane franklin mentioned it on facebook and i was like i gotta throw this out to them and I got a video of um, her daughter, Olivia, and her friend <laughs> taking a pie in the face for this challenge. So they're, they're pretty funny about it. Oh, my gosh. I'll have to check it out, the YouTube yep. um, 
channel. That's a riot. Well, I have no problem with it. I'll be happy to do that. Anything for the animals and, um, you know, getting a donation for the animals, because that's what's important. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, me looking foolish to help an animal, I'm all for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go. So Oh, well, thank you so, so much. Um, you have a wonderful evening. And by the way, I love the way you say the word out, O-U-T. Out? I, oh, I love it. I love the Canadian accent. It's so charming. Every time you said about and out, I can't do it. But I just, I love it. I love it so much. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, mostly, mostly uh, the Canadian and accent is very similar to a, you know, generic um, American accent, but certain words are a little different and I find them so charming. I love, you know, about and out and I just love it. I love it. I also love a British accent as well. There you go. I'm, I'm big. I'm big on accents. <laughs> there you go. Well, before yeah. I let you go, I would love a plug for my show. Oh, absolutely. Um, and it's uh, called The Greg Gilbert Show? or It's called Python's Paradise with Greg Gilbert. And you just state your name and uh, say that we're celebrating the 40th anniversary of Last American Virgin. We're listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. Okay. Hi, everyone. We are listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise, and we are plugging the 40th anniversary of the film, The Last American Virgin. So be sure to tune in. It's a wonderful podcast. And the host, Greg Gilbert, is amazing. He's warm and funny and wonderful. And I recommend this podcast wholeheartedly. Please tune in. Thank you so much. Yes, folks, this is uh, Python's Paradise, your host, Greg Gilbert, with Tessa Richard from The Last American Virgin, among other creative, very funny movies. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless you. This has been an honor. Oh, thank you. And God bless you, too, Greg. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.